Hello friends, today we are going to discuss a structural level of protein. In previous lecture, we have seen a classification of a protein. Protein is a macromolecule, hence its classification is important. Also, when we consider a structural study of protein, in structural study of protein, the structural study is divided into different parts or for simplicity of study of protein structure. It can be divided into different parts or different structural level. Hence, when we consider the protein structure, the protein structure we are considering as different structural level. So, in this lecture we are going to see a different structural levels of the protein. Let's consider the structural levels of the protein. Proteins are macromolecules means having a very complex structure. To understand the structure, the protein structure can be considered and different level. The complexity depends upon the molecular size and shape of the molecule. So when we consider a protein variety, protein is always a macro molecule and molecular size and shape of the protein are different. Hence their structural study becomes slightly difficult to make easy the understanding of structural level of protein. There are different levels for protein. There are four structural levels which describe the protein structure, which are primary structural level or primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure, and a cotagonic structure. So here we can consider a four structural levels of protein matter. First primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. At these four different levels, at these four different levels, we are having the study of protein in different ways. So let's consider one by one the structural levels of the protein. Primary structural level or primary structure of the protein. The primary structure of the protein is a linear sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide chain joined by a peptide bond. So here what we are considering, we are considering that it is a linear sequence of amino acids. It is a linear sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. So linear sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide chain which are joined by the Peptide bond. This peptide bond formation we have already discussed. It is a number and a sequence of amino acids that determine the specificity of the protein. Proteins always have a highly specific action, and this specificity of protein is due to the number and the sequence, specific sequence of the amino acids. So they are having their specific sequence we mentioned in primary structure. Any change in the sequence gives different protein. So when we are having any change in the protein, polypeptide sequence that results into the different protein. So in primary structure level we are considering a sequence of an amino acid in the polypeptide chain. If we consider a molecular biology here, this specific sequence is generated by the genetic information which is stored in the DNA. So we are obtaining or uh, this sequence of amino acids is generated by the DNA which stores the genetic information. When we consider the stability of a primary structure, stability of a primary structure is due to the peptide bonds and disulfide. So the peptide bonds which are formed between the two amino acids and the disulfide bonds which are formed between the cysteine, they are responsible for the stabilization of the primary structure or
or stability of the primary structure. Primary structure we just consider the sequence of an amino acid. Suppose if I say alanine, glycine, lysine, phenylalanine, tryptophan, it is a sequence and the number. So I am describing the primary structure of the amino acid. Let's consider the figure here. Here now you can see these are the amino acids which are joined by the peptide linkage. This amino acid sequence, this amino acid sequence, if we mention in a linear way, it is simply called as the primary structural level of the amino acid. See, primary structural level of the protein in which we only find what are the amino acids which are linked in a sequence with each other. So that is the primary structure. Now let's consider the secondary structure which is more important for the study of a protein molecule. The secondary structure of a protein is three dimensional three dimensional arrangement of atoms in a molecule. Arrangement of an atom in a molecule which is also called as a protein conformation. Protein conformation. So in primary structure we are finding out the sequence. In secondary structure now we are finding out the three dimensional argument of the atoms in the molecule. This leads to the formation of and conformation of the protein. Therefore also called as a protein conformation. The secondary structure is stabilized due to the hydrogen bonding, due to the disulfide bonding, ionic bonding and hydrophobic bonding. These four bondings are very important in the protein structure. Hydrogen bonding which gives more stability, then disulfide bonding which is formed between the two cysteine amino acids, ionic bonding which is formed between the oppositely charged R group and hydrophobic bonding which resulted due to the presence of an uh, R side chain R group. So let's consider this. A uh, two scientists, Linus Pauli and Robert Corey, Linus Pauli and Robert Corey, they elucidate the secondary structure or secondary structural level while studying the tip while studying the X-ray diffraction pattern of the polypeptide chain. They were doing a study on the protein myelin and they want to find out what is the structure of protein. Therefore, they done the X-ray diffraction and from X-ray diffraction of polypeptide chain, they found a two different type of the conformation or two different type of the arrangements in a polypeptide chain. Bond length and bond angle. Bond length and bond angle. These are the two important factors which determine the configuration of the protein. The configuration of a protein results into the helical and pleated sheet structure. Pleated sheet structure. So there are two configuration helical and sheet structure. These configurations are resulted due to the bond length and bond angle between the amino acids. So let's consider in a detail these two structures that is a helical and beta plated sheet structure, alpha helical structure and beta plated sheet structure. Now let's consider first the alpha helical structure. Polypeptide bond bound tightly around an imaginary axis to give a helix structure to give a helix so these two scientists Pauling and Corey call it as a alpha helical structure in this case a polypeptide chain is wound tightly around an imaginary axis which resulted into the helix structure and it is the alpha helical structure. This alpha helical structure having stability due to the rigid polypeptide bond and other single bonds are free to rotate. Other single bonds are free to rotate. So rigid polypeptide bond and other single bonds are free to rotate, which results into the more stable arrangement of an helix. There are Two type of the proteins we have already seen, group globular and fibrous protein. This structure is common in both, that is a globular.
pillar and the fibrous protein. Now let's consider the example alpha keratin of hair and food is the simplest example of an alpha helical structure. Let's go in a detail for the alpha helical structure. It is a right hand alpha helical coil structure which resulted into the formation of an helix. Each so it is a right hand helical structure. Now each coil is consists of a 3.4 amino acid residue. So each turn or each coil you can say this is of a 3.4 amino acid residue. Average there are 3.4 amino acid residue. The distance or the one turn is corresponding of a 5.4 angstrom long. So there is a approximately 3 to 4 amino acid can fit in this distance which resulted into the one turn. More importantly, the helical structure is stable because R group of helical structure is pointed outside. The side chain R group in the amino acid which is outside the helix. So due to that, there is a less steric interaction and which results into the more stability. Hydrogen bonding is a major factor which is responsible for the stability of the alpha helical structure. The hydrogen bonding is present between the first and the fourth amino acid. The first amino acid carbonyl and the fourth amino acid amino group, they are involved in the hydrogen bonding. This extensive hydrogen bonding resulted into the stability of the alpha helical structure. Along with that, a disulfide bonding, ionic bonding and hydrophobic bonding these are the factors which also result into the stability of a helical structure. So this helical structure is a right handed alpha helical coil which consists of a 5.4 angstrom length in a one turn which consists with a 3.4 amino acid residue R group is pointed outside and main factor for the stability of this is a hydrogen bonding which is present between the amino acid first and the fourth amino acid. Along with this, there are some destabilizing factors also, which destabilizes the alpha helical structure. The bulkier R groups, if they are present to adjacent, they resulted into the steric interaction and due to that alpha helical structure is a unstable. Similarly, if same charge R groups, if same charge R groups are present on the adjacent amino acid, they will also result into the destabilization of structure by the electrostatic force of repulsion. In the same charge that is a positively charged R group, if they appear close, there will be repulsion. If negatively charged R group appear closer, there will be the again a repulsion. So this stabilization is due to the R group, same charge R group. Then if there is an introduction of an proline amino acid in the polypeptide chain, that also results into the destabilization. The result is uh, reason is quite simple. The amino group involved in a side chain R group of the proline. So side chain R group is having a bonding with an amino group which resulted into the bending of the molecule. It is also helpful for the, we will see how it is helpful for the protein structure. But here it destabilizes the alpha helical structure. Now let's consider the actual structure of an alpha helix. Now here you can see, here there is a hydrogen bonding. These R groups are pointed outside. This one term, this one term, suppose we consider here this term and this term. This distance between these two is 5.4 angstrom. It is a 5.4 angstrom. So this distance is a 5.4 angstrom and in between these there are 3.4 amino acids. Okay. Now here is the hydrogen bonding. You can see here 1, 2, here will be third and this will be the fourth. So here is the hydrogen bonding which gives the stability. This R group is pointed outside. All R groups are pointed outside. And you can see here, or 
imaginary axis can pass it through this helical structure or coil structure. Therefore, it is called as the alpha helical structure. It is a right-handed helical structure. So here we are considering a alpha helical structure. Okay. So in alpha helical structure, what points we have to remember? We have to remember that it is a right-handed alpha helical coil structure consists of an 3.4 amino acid per turn residue and 5.4 angstrom long one turn consists of. R group is oriented outside. Hydrogen bonding gives more stability, which is present between first and the fourth amino acid in the polypeptide chain. Along with this, a disulfide bonding, ionic bonding, and hydrophobic bonding, these are the Secondary factors which are also stabilizing the alpha helix structure. The destabilization of this is due to the bulkier R group. If bulkier R groups are adjacent to each other, then they resulted into the steric interaction and refunction will happen, will happen which results into the destabilization of an helical structure. The same charge R group, if they are on the adjacent, that is Suppose this is a with plus charge and this R group is also with the plus charge, then what will happen? Both having the same electric charge, therefore this resulted into the uh, repulsion. And last, if there is a presence of an proline amino acid, that proline amino acid amino group is involved in the side chain R group or side chain R group is attached with that amino group. Due to that, it resulted into the bending and this bending destabilizes the alpha helical structure. Okay, so in this video or in this lecture, what we have seen, we have seen the primary structural level and the secondary structural level of the protein. In primary structural level, it is the number and the sequence of an amino acid which are present in the protein myelin. If we determine only the sequence of amino acid present in the protein myelin, then it is called as a primary structural level study or primary structural level of the protein. The secondary structural level of the protein, it is consists of a conformation that is three dimensional arrangement of the atoms of the molecule. Atoms of the molecule that is the amino acid polypeptide chain that consists of a secondary structure. In secondary structure, polypeptide bond and the other bonds are free to rotate. Rigid polypeptide bonds and other bonds which are free to rotate, they are mainly responsible for the stability of this secondary structure. The two scientists, Linus Pauli and Robert Corey, they have determine the secondary structure or while doing the study of protein, X-ray diffraction pattern of the polypeptide chain, they concluded two structures for the secondary structure of protein, that is the helix structure and eco sheet structure. This helix structure we have seen, which is a right hand alpha helical coil with an 3.4 amino acid residue per turn a distance or the length of the turn is 5.4 angstrom. R group is oriented outside and hydrogen bonding, disulfide bonding, ionic bonding, hydrophobic bonding, these are the stabilizing factors for the alpha helical structure. The destabilizing factor for the alpha helical structure are bulkier R group, same charge R group on the adjacent charge, adjacent amino acid and a proline which introduce the folding. So here we will stop the discussion at secondary level for alpha helical structure. In the next video we will go for the remaining that is a beta plated sheet structure, beta turn, tertiary structure and the quaternary structure level of the protein. So thank you very much for watching this video.